Good morning. I will briefly talk to you about the power of Italian brands and how do they manage the passage between tradition and innovation. In order to do this, we have to imagine a brand like a person, like a people, with a, a mission, with some values that want to carry into time, with a strong position compared to the market to its refers, and having a strong personality and a sensibility, a way to look at reality that becomes very, very important. So we can imagine a brand as a mixture of four very important assets, one related to the fact to be unique. You have to be different from anybody else. You have to be yourself, as we want to be in our life. Then you need some coherence. It's important that you don't go too out of your perimeter and like in your life, you behave with a certain continuity. But it's also very important that you are able to make something memorable in your life, something crazy that looks contradictory to what I said before. But it's very important that you put some landmark, that you do something that people will remember forever. And then, last but not least, very important for our design approach, you are able to continuously change, to continuously improve the way you look at reality, and you are able to push innovation into the market. So in order to do this, I will highlight three different approaches that uh, the Italian brands has been carrying out in time in the last uh, 50 years and more. So the first one is to imagine the relation between tradition and innovation as something continuous, having a slow evolution, but always transforming and uh, moving into time. So we can take, for example, Campari, a very famous uh, red liqueur company, mainly one product company, but uh, since uh, the beginning of the last century, working together with artists, with creative people, so making his unicity as something linked to uh, creativity, to passion, to a strong use of color that is red, since the time of Fortunato De Pero and Futurist, but working also with the Italian avant-garde in design like Bruno Munari, here playing with the Campari logo in a very funny way, a little unrespectable by me, but always uh, marking the power of the brand, and also partnering with very famous director like Sorrentino, a, a Oscar winner director, and always trying to move into passion, and uh, red, which are the strong element of this company. And if we say red and passion, we can't imagine something different from Ferrari, a company that makes memorability its main asset and uh, started with incredible cars with milestones in the history of automation, automotive, sorry, and able not only to make products, but to create challenge, to be into the competition, to be into team working, putting his technical team and millions of passionate people and fans together in incredible moments in the history of sport. But Ferrari today is such a memorable brand that is able to extend his brand power into a place, into merchandise, into everything they want, like they did in Abu Dhabi with the incredible challenge of Ferrari World. But we can also imagine that uh, evolution in your brand means to behavior like uh, Mr. Armani did. So always moving in a very regular way, very smooth, very elegant, very controlled, uh, always following your taste and your way to dress people since ever, since the 80s, when uh, the Italian fashion brand uh, pop up uh, with uh, Preta Porte, but uh, arriving to today, where Armani is not only anymore a fashion company, they do furniture, they have an incredible museum, so they extended the power of their brand into space, into communication, into something much bigger than a pair of, of shoes. A second approach that can be very interesting to look at is instead how a brand can be discontinuous, can be a little contradictory. We could say also maybe a little schizophrenic, if you want to joke on the words, because uh, continuity is relevant, but also to be able to change in a disruptive way can be interesting. And I believe one of the champions of this is Alessi, a brand that for sure you know that has been 
a champion in the last uh, 20 years in the Italian design. And Alessi started from a traditional family company, like many Italian brands. And uh, this was the grandfather of uh, Alberto Alessi that designed this uh, uh, tea set. Uh, it was one of the first uh, industrial tea set using curvy lines and soft lines. Not easy to be done industrially. And this was the luckiness of the company. And then when Alberto came in, he put together an incredible team, a dream team of very famous designer. In this picture you can see uh, Achille Castiglioni, you can see Enzo Mari, you can see uh, Aldo Rossi, a well-known architect, and you can see Alessandro Mandini that was the art director of uh, Alessi for many years. And they deliver a collection of incredible masterpieces boiler, uh, coffee pots that are still in all the design museum worldwide and are still on the market after 25, 30 years that has been designed. But at the same time, Alessi moved from something classical, let's say, and made in stainless steel to very colorish, pop, transgressive and crazy kind of plastic collection. So changing material from stainless steel to plastic and introducing a totally different language, much more friendly, much more cozy, much more provocative, generating families of strange animals and puppies and, uh, and uh, personalities going around for your table. And this was an incredible su success again that allowed Alessi to move and to create partnership with very famous company from cars producer to toilet producer to uh, Philips uh, uh, with the first uh, uh, electrified collection of uh, domestic appliances. So Alessi moved in a very different way in the last uh, 20 years and also probably a company like Autogrill that if you've been traveling by car in Italy you should know because uh, Autogrill started as uh, a public company after the Second World War during the booming of Italian economy and they were a crazy idea to let have very high quality food on highway while people started to travel and to go for holidays and around Italy. So we are crazy for food as you know and the idea was to have astonishing restaurant on the highway with very impacting architecture and understanding the need for Italian people and visitors in our country to always have uh, the best food uh, also when you are on the move. Autogrill now is a private company, is number one in the world in food on the move. They own more than 100 brands, including Burger King's or operating many Starbucks in Europe. And they are always moving into uh, architecture, creating different buildings, updating their service, and arriving today to create uh, the most advanced uh, sustainable highway stop uh, that is a building that I designed, unfortunately, but that has become a landmark and a reference for sustainability and green service during traveling. And this is an interesting story that uh, again mark uh, uh, the authenticity and the craziness sometimes of Italian brands, but also their capability to be unique and to try to offer to clients and market unique solutions. And another case history, very interesting, looking again at fashion, is a brand well known as Fila that started in the 70s with a big success when this guy, by Borg, won the Wimbledon Tennis Championship and introduced in a field where everything was dressing white, uh, first uh, use of color, starting to have this famous white line uh, collection that is white but not so white as it was before and with Bjorn Borg and his uh, uh, lucky career Fila become a very important brand into sport and then in the 80s and the 90s they also move into different sports as many sport companies but they start to make a big shift so to become from sport apparel a street life company so their champion, like in basketball, were dressing Fila, not only on the court, not only into the field when they were playing, but also in their leisure time. And many uh, rappers or singers or uh, uh, hip-hop uh, players start using the black 
uh, apparel of Fila. And that moved Fila into the fashion world, definitely. And uh, if you look what Fila is now, after 50 years of history, it's a totally fashionable company <laughs> dressed on streetwear. And now they've been bought by Fendi. And if you see here, it's really a very strong merge between Fendi and Fila, and they are playing and being ironic on this. And last year, they made the first cut, cut work of Fila products, and the white collection was still there after 50 years. Then, last but not least, I believe we can really talk about uh, disruption and how you can be not only discontinuous, but to be able to enter in a market with a very strong revolution and being able to handle this approach into time. Because every revolution starts as a revolution, but then if you don't keep it alive, should easily go into tradition. So it's very important if you get into a market as a, a, a breakers that you are able to push the level of your innovation in time. A good example of this is Piaggio, the company that invented Vespa in the 50s, again, we are in the years after the Second World War, when the Italian economy was booming, and Vespa was, I believe, one of the smartest examples of product placement, because Vespa became popular because of a very famous movie that was uh, uh, a Roman holiday, in which uh, uh, Italian actors were going around into Rome using a Vespa, and that's where the Dolce Vita started. So not only a product, but a product with a lifestyle, with a different way to using a motorbike, in this case, a scooter, and creating a new product category. So what to do after this? Not easy to keep, also if Vespa is still there, and after 50 years is continually redesigned, but they move also into other kind of products using the power of the brand. And they really spread the Piaggio brand all over the world with these uh, three wheels uh, uh, cargo that now it's also available electrically on the market that become in, in India, in many countries, an incredible way for humble people with a low cost to carry goods without having a driver license. And this was another big hit on the market, keeping say the capability of Piaggio to see things from a, a different point of view, uh, speaking about uh, mobility and micro mobility. And now <coughs> they started with a, a new project. They have a special uh, design lab, which is called Piaggio uh, Fast Forward, where they're trying to imagine what will be in the future micromobility as smart mobility. And they're designing <coughs> a kind of uh, self-driving trolley that can follow you, can bring your shopping, can bring your sport uh, goods, uh, can move uh, around the city where you are going, and I don't know if this will be really a hit like uh, Vespa or uh, Ape, but for sure it's a very interesting concept, and I know they are working on this in order to be again able to be disruptive as they were in the past. Another very important company that probably you know because has been leader for un many years into the uh, field of lighting is Floss. Floss is related to the Castiglioni brother and to their incredible invention and creation of new typologies since the 60s. The example of the arco lamp uh, that is a short of uh, contradiction because it's a floor lamp but making light from the ceiling. So it's putting together uh, two different uh, culture of lighting but it's also putting together stainless steel and uh, the richness of marble, so an industrial material with a historical and luxurious material. So uh, again, is the capability to make something new because like in many Castiglioni projects, you put together elements that were divided and you create something new, heading uh, things together. But this was only the beginning of a very incredible history because uh, Floss uh, changed again and into the 90s, they hire a designer like Philip Stark that uh, for sure is a very contradictory and an interesting uh, kind of designer. And he was one of the first people again to innovate through materials and to use uh, polycarbonate and plastic material to make uh, a small luxury lamp 
like was the Mississi that was an incredible success and has been like the Arco copied in thousands of, uh, of versions. And uh, Stark, uh, uh, with his personality, uh, moved more and more the company toward the field of uh, interior design and contract. And this is what the company make mainly today. So it's not only selling products, but selling interior, selling a full design, a lightscape uh, that could be necessary in a you know, hotel, in an office, in an apartment, but not just selling products, but selling a contract solution. And this is the uh, Como Hotel uh, Lake designed by Patricia Urquiola, where the lamps are bespoke, are designed just for that hotel. So arriving to bespoke and to customization as the last step of a history that started as an industrial company and now is a tailor-made company, or let's say it's both. And last but not least, a very interesting design company also related to interior design, much more younger maybe than the other that I showed to you before, that is Lago. It's a company coming from the northeast of Italy, so with a different approach from the traditional Milan-based uh, design company in Italy. They started with a very strong and provocative approach to design, a very clear and geometrical design with a strong use of color and with a lot of irony, with a lot of provo provocation, not being too serious, apparently, but being very good in the flexibility, in the modularity, in the componability of their products. So from kitchen, they move into the whole interior design of the uh, home environment. And then they have been also very provocative and very smart in uh, creating new kind of relationship with their clients, with architect designers, but also with the final user. They created in Brera, in the center of Milan, an apartment that is called Lago Apartment that is not a showroom. It's a real apartment that you can hire to have a dinner with your friend, to present a book, uh, to make a concert, and you can use this apartment by payment, obviously, or maybe for free if it's something they decide it's so interesting. But it's not the classical showroom where you just uh, look at things and there is a beautiful display but could be a little uh, fake. It's something alive where you can uh, test the furniture and you can meet people. And this is what brands want to do today, to generate experience, to become touchable, to become close to people, always keeping them able to dream. And uh, Lago is also the most popular uh, furniture brand on the web and uh, on the social media. The CEO of Lago is a very young person, so very uh, smart in using uh, digital technologies to uh, make grow its uh, relationship with, uh, with clients. And they are very sensible, for example, to uh, social issue or to uh, special uh, target, uh, speaking about, for example, the role of uh, female into creativity, into design, so trying to figure out uh, topics and themes that are not banal, they are not just uh, related to, to product design, but they are related to their mission to their identity, to the values that each brand uh, wants to bring on the market. So I just uh, spread very quickly around and I showed three possible approach. Obviously there are not only three approach, there are much more. And I hope that if you will join the master, we will have together the time to think on this and to imagine how this story can be profitable for each of you. Thank you very much. Shesheh.